Hi everybody, this video will describe how to create some different interactions with uh, materials, how you can change materials through a blueprint and through a collision. So uh, in the previous video we talked about how to set up some different types of materials. In this video I, ha I have, in this level, I have uh, some basic collision set up with a blueprint. So this one is a swap between two different materials when I enter or exit the collision. And then this one over here is a smooth blend between two different materials when I enter or exit that um, collision zone as well. So let's talk about that. So I have a blueprints folder and in the blueprints folder I have a basic BP cube mat change. And if I open this up I'll show you how I set this up. In the viewport I have a simple cube <coughs> and then I have a box collision that I've scaled up to the size that I want the player to interact with. The cube's base material, I've set to one of my emissive materials. So I've created some custom materials here. One of them is just an emissive blue. And I've set my base material for that cube in my blueprint to this emissive blue. This is a actor blueprint. So if you go to right click blueprint class and an actor blueprint, that's what I've created here. And then in the event graph is where we change that material when the player overlaps that collision. So with the collision selected in uh, the event graph, I've created a on component in, or whoop, let's go up some, on component begin overlap. Zoom in here so we can see it maybe. So with that collision selected, when the player overlaps this collision, I want to set the material, basically swap the material. When the player leaves this collision, I want to reset the material back to this emissive blue. So you need to have the materials, different materials created first. So I have my blue and I have my <coughs> uh, red. And then in my blueprint, on begin overlap, I want to switch or swap this material to emissive red. So this is a set material. Uh, if I delete this out, drag out from executable there, I can search for set material. And on the set material of what? I need to determine this needs to be on the cube object. I can take that cube target and put it there. And then I need to determine what material this is. So let's do M emissive red. Okay. And then <clears throat> when I end the overlap, I want to set it back to blue. So same set material with the cube, change it back to the default emissive blue. Let's just swap it out so it's a green one instead to show you the change. Uh, M emissive green, because I have a green one as well. Yeah. That's it. That's as simple as the blueprint needs to be. So then now if I come over here and play, I can find my cube. Now it should change to green. And this is just a swap, on off <coughs> change between one material to the next. Okay. What if you wanted to blend between two different materials? And this can work with any attributes that we create as a parameter in our material. So I've created a separate blend material. And in this material, I actually have two subset materials. I open this up. If you want to blend between two different materials, we need a more complex material setup. <coughs> so in my material, I have a make material attributes node. And this gives me all of my options for what material one is going to look like. And this is just going to have um, a, uh, I'm using parameters for this as well. So I have a vector three parameter for color, and then I have a uh, constant one parameter for emissive. And those are kind of funneled into multiply, same way I would set up a basic emissive material. But the difference is in this one material, I have two make material attributes, one for material one, one for material two. And then to convert these together, I'm going to create a blend material attributes node and then funnel the top one into A and the bottom one into B. And then I need to determine how they're going to blend. So I'm going to use the alpha and I'm going to create a constant or scalar parameter uh, that is going to be really a slider between zero, oops, zero and one. I'm only going to blend it between 100% opaque. Uh, between B versus A, 100% or 0%, so 0 to 1. The other difference is the way the end material is set up, and the only thing I've changed here 
is this use material attributes. So as default, our base material will look like this. But instead, I want to blend between two different materials with these make material attributes. So the only difference here is this emissive blend material, the base material. In the details panel, I'm going to search for attributes. And I'm going to checkbox use material attributes. OK, so I'm going to checkbox that. And then I can connect this blend materials attribute to my M emissive blend materials attribute node. All right, so that's all I need for that material. I'll zoom out so you can see it. And then now what I can do is build a instance copy. I'm going to right click and choose create material instance. And say we'll say you know, final here since I got a test one earlier. And in this material instance, I'm going to open up my parameters and then determine what material A looks like versus material B. So material A, let's do um, let's do a green. And material B, let's do a red. Okay, a little darker, a little bit more red. There you go. And then I can increase that emissive. So we'll do like um, 50. And then I'm going to leave the blend value at 0, which means it's going to be green. But if I change that blend value to 1, that will change it to red. So this is a uh, will be a scalar parameter that will blend back and forth between the two. I'm going to leave that at 0. So let's save that. All right, so I have actually duplicated my uh, VP cube mat. So we actually create another one here from scratch. So let's duplicate this one, our previous one. And we'll say change blend red green. Okay. And then go ahead and drag that as a copy in my scene. But then I'm going to duplicate or open up my blueprint and make my adjustment. So it's the same exact setup as the previous one, but my material is now going to be, let's see, M, um, what did I call it? Blend, blend. Yeah, M emissive blend final. And that's going to be the green to red blend. So I have my collision for where I want the player to interact with. The difference is going to be in the event graph and how I'm calling this. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm not going to use the set material anymore. I'm going to use a timeline and then the blend function. So I'm actually going to go open up the previous one that I have. And then I'm going to make copies of this. So this is a timeline. And then I'm going to need my set scalar parameter value on materials, reference to the cube. And then I'm going to change the value for the blend so that I know which parameter I need to blend between. So that's going to be my setup. From event begin overlap, I'm going to drag out and we'll add a new timeline. And we'll call this blend timeline. Right. In that timeline, I'm going to create a float track. And we're going to name that float track blend value. We're going to do a one second for the length. And then I'm going to right click in my timeline and choose add key. And then we'll change the time to zero and zero. We want the value and time to be zero to begin with. We'll right click over there near one and do add key float. And then we'll do time of one and value of one. And then we can expand our horizontal and vertical so we can see the curve. So basically it's going to blend from that zero, one material to one, the second material. So back in our event graph, we need to connect this to um, drag out from update and we'll connect this to set scalar uh, parameter value on material and then we need to determine this needs to be on the cube. There we go. So we'll do that cube. And then we need to connect up our blend values. So once again if you don't like overlapping lines you can do that. Move it up. And then we need to tell what parameter on the material we want to blend with and that was titled blend. So if I go back to my material Blend test, uh, blend final. Here it is. So the blend value is the parameter that we want to use there. There you go. Red, green. We will compile and save. So then now, if I come over here and test this kind of third block, that should blend between red and green, depending on if I'm in the box or out of the box. Okay. Oh, actually, it's not resorting back because I didn't do the end overlap. So 
So let's go back and correct that. Let's go back to our blueprint. Oops, this one right here. And from the end overlap, we want to reverse it. So I want to reverse it back to the original material. So we do execute from end overlap to reverse. We can do other things, but that's at least a default or a base for it. So now it's green to begin with. When I go into the zone, it's going to change to red. When I get out of the zone, it's going to change back to green. So anything with a scalar parameter or vector parameter, we can access through, well, let's go back to our material, or excuse me, the blueprint. We can access through a set scalar parameter value on material. So if we want to do the uh, emissive value or any other kind of parameter that we have set up in our material, we can access and change the parameter name and then blend that emissive value if we wanted to as well. Um, so those are other ways uh, to make adjustments to blending values and changing them over time with the timeline. Uh, but that is a good basis for a couple different ways we can use materials and change them with a blueprint. Okay. I'll wrap up this video on material interactions with blueprints.